Welcome to Orthodox Christian Television. My name is Father Christodoulos. This is Chios, the Island of Saints, Part 8. Welcome back, Dr. Illich. Well, thank you very much. Glad we to are, be here. Thank you for coming. Where did we leave off in Part 7 in Chios? Well, we're at the time of the Greek Revolution, uh, actually. In 1821, uh, the Greeks revolted against Turkish rule. And very quickly, Chios became involved in that. Uh, what we had... We had a situation where the Chian population as a whole was among the most prosperous part of the Turkish Empire. Uh, the people were peaceful, prosperous, there were merchants, there were schools, uh, and he was even a college. And they, uh, the revolutionaries attempted to involve like he is into the revolution, but the people in general felt that they had no chance being so close to Turkey and not by that time, they really were not used to being military people anymore as they had been in ancient times uh, when Chios was a major power. So, so it's a general, I'm sorry, generally it was an island of merchants, it was an island of, of uh, farmers, a peaceful, prosperous people that didn't want any part of a rebellion against the Ottoman Empire. As a whole, that's absolutely correct. Uh, why why would, would, were they sp more prosperous? than the, the general Greek-speaking population? Uh, they were much more prosperous uh, because of uh, one particular reason more than anything else, and that was the mastic which was grown on Chios and which wasn't to be found anywhere else. And uh, these mastic trees provided a source of income for the Turkish Empire, which was an extreme importance to the Ottomans. In fact, uh, the mother of the sultan was usually given uh, their revenues from the mastic villages, uh, mastic core, 24 villages in Hios which specialized in growing mastic, and uh, the Turks made a fortune from it. In order to keep that money coming, in, they allowed the Kians quite a bit of uh, autonomy and prosperity. And that is why the Kians really didn't want to revolt in this period. So basically they were given certain privileges, not, not necessarily rights, but privileges to keep the mastic industry prospering for the sake of the Turkish Ottoman Empire. Absolutely. But the Heans themselves were also allowed a certain amount of prosperity and, and luxurious living, we could say. Yes, yes, and they so, actually lived very well at that particular time. So, so for uh, this reason, they were not a militarized people as the rest of the Greek-speaking world was. When I say militarized, they were hunters, they had guns hidden, they had knives hidden, they were pirates, they were um, former uh, brigands who were now uh, forming a revolutionary cause, were forming together in bands to revolt against the Ottoman oppression. Well, much of the Greek people on the mainland of Greece lived under very harsh conditions, uh, like uh, in the Peloponnese and so on, and hardship actually breeds a uh, hardy people, a uh, warrior people, uh, people who are willing to fight and kill and to be killed in order to achieve their independence. The Kians were not such a people at this particular time, and they, while they greatly sympathized with the uh, Greek Revolution, in fact, uh, uh, Karaias, uh, who was a Kian descent, was uh, considered like the intellectual father of the Greek uh, revolutionary movement. Also, Mavrokordatos, uh, the whole Mavrokordatos family, Mavrokordatos who became president of revolutionary Greece was of Chian origin as well. So then Greek exiles, we could say Chians, I'm sorry, Chian exiles, Chiotas, Chians who lived outside of Chios on the mainland or in or other parts of Europe, like Gorais and Mavrokordatos, these mm -hmm. men were Chians, were but they were, took part in the revolution, but off of, off Chios, off island. Off island, uh, they really, even they, really did not want to involve Chios in the revolution, but some people did. And uh, in, in late, of 18, late 1821, uh, Demetrius Ypsilanti gave permission for a force of revolutionaries to prepare to land in Chios to try to raise the standard of revolution 
against the Turks in Kiev anyway. In, 18, in late 1821. Late 1821. The revolution had begun in, on March 25th, 1821. Right. So by November, something like November? Around December 1821. 1821. A, was, it, was it a fact-finding mission that was sent to Kiev? Or was no, it? no. He actually authorized the preparation for a landing force of revolutionaries who would go there and try to oust the Turks and raise the standard of revolt in Kiev. Later on, he had second thoughts about it, but he never canceled this particular plan to raise up a revolutionary force in Kios and, uh, and try to make Kios join the revolution. What kind of preparations were made for this revolt in Kios? Were arms sent there? Were well, trained uh, militiamen sent there, officers? Well, uh, armed force was prepared. About 2,000 men were prepared. Most of them were in Samos and uh, under the leadership of Logotetis, who was uh, Lycurgus Logothetis, Lycurgus Logothetis, who was uh, a Samian, and Borneus, who was a Chian, who had served in Napoleon's army and so the, was a Napoleonic soldier. So they prepared a force of 2,000 men to go there. And this took quite a while. However, uh, the Greeks were unaware of one particular thing which doomed this before it started. And that was that the British uh, who had an ambassador in Constantinople and also had a representative, quite a few representatives, official representatives with the Greek Revolution, uh, were informed by the Greeks, revolutionaries, so what they plan to do is. So they immediately uh, informed the Turkish government that uh, there was a planned revolt in Kios that was orchestrated and being planned, an invasion force was prepared, the revolutionaries, to try to win Kios for the Greek Revolution. So even though, this is, first of all, I have to tell you, I've never heard this before. I've never heard this or read this oh, anywhere. Oh, this is documented, as you can see. I have copies of official British diplomatic correspondence. I mean, I know a lot of Heans, and I've spoken to a lot of Heans about the Greek War of Independence and Heos' involvement in it. My father's from, born in Heos. I've never heard anyone ever say that the British tipped off the, the Turks to the fact that the Heans were about to revolt. Repeatedly. Now, why didn't the Turks, why didn't the Turks uh, meet the uh, invasion force? Well, the Turks actually started preparing. The British, uh, you have to, on the first, uh, the, well, let's go back to the British for a moment. Uh, the British were controlled by a very, uh, the British government was controlled by uh, the foreign policy of Lord Castlereagh, the Marquis of Londonderry, and his foreign policy was to be against revolutionary movements everywhere for stability in Europe and uh, Southeast Europe and the Balkans. The main goal of British foreign policy was no revolt and support the status quo. So That's understandable. Being that they're a monarchy in England, in the Ottoman Empire, the Turks were a monarchy of sorts. So it would make sense. So the British were actually, well, telling the Greeks that they were sympathetic to the Greeks, they were really on the side of the Turks at this particular time. In fact, uh, I've seen copies of diplomatic correspondence from the British foreign minister urging his ambassador, uh, Strangfort, Vice Count Strangfort in Constantinople, to urge the Turks, you must suppress these Greeks, you must bring them down, you must do whatever it takes to suppress the Greeks, the revolution must not succeed. We want the Ottoman Empire to stay strong and prosperous. Well, while it's understandable that the, the monarchy of England would be against a revolt of the Greek-speaking people against the Turks, it's not understand, uh, understandable, nor is it, uh, ex there's no excuse for their duplicitous, their duplicity in telling the Greeks on one hand, yes, revolt, but on the other hand, they're telling well, the, they, the Turks, they watch say, out for the revolt. They didn't tell the Greeks revolt. They told the Greeks, basically, they told the Greeks, we love you. That's about as far as they went. We really love Greeks. Okay, but we love you. But, 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 and that's it. And then the Greeks confided in the British, and the British ran to uh, the Turkish government and told the Turkish government oh, so the, everything they heard. The, Bur the British in, the, in no way encouraged a revolt. At this particular time, they did not. They didn't encourage oh, a okay, revolt. Oh, okay, because I, uh, I thought I misunderstood you. I thought that they were playing both sides somehow. No, they were being friendly with the Greek revolutionaries without encouraging them to revolt. They well, friendly means what? We love you? Friendly, we, we love you, and uh, we will try to talk to the Turks to make things better for you. Uh, but they never encouraged them to revolt. And they never this, gave them any arms or any kind of... Not at this time. N okay. Not yet. Okay. Not no, yet. Things changed. 
But at this particular time, no. They, oh, well, but the Greeks did confide in the British. The Greeks felt that the British were on their side. So oh, they well, they confided. were hearing, in other words, the British were getting intelligence from the Greeks? Well, the, intelligence? Greeks uh, the Greeks were just telling them just about everything they planned. Well, so then there, there was a betrayal in a oh, way. Oh, it was a betrayal, no doubt about it. It was a betrayal. It was a betrayal which involved taking the confidence uh, from the Greek revolutionaries. We love you, we love you. And we lo we'll we'll try to make to better to you, things better for you and so on. And uh, Meanwhile, the, while you're saying I love you, there's a knife being stuck in your back. And not only that, uh, the I love you was a big lie. I, I've read the uh, you know, memoirs of a uh, British naval officer, Captain Hamilton, who, said, who was a representative to the Greek revolutionaries at this time. And he stated that he and uh, most, of, most of his officers uh, really can't stand Greeks. Really? Okay, well, the, their behavior, their behavior uh, uh, betrayed that. Their behavior expressed that. So let's go on. Now, the uh, and there was another reason, by the way, which is important to remember, why, why the British were not in favor of the Greek Revolution succeeding. They were afraid of Russia. Russia was this time uh, under the Tsars, of course, and it was an orthodox country and very sympathetic to the revolutionaries. And actually, Russia was helping the revolutionaries with arms and uh, even men. Mm -hmm. but, and the British were afraid that if a re revolution succeeded, that this would involve an expansion of the Russian Empire in the Balkans and uh, Asia. And this would be a threat to the British Empire, which was still growing at this particular time. So. Uh, there were well, you know, the Russians also had a monarchy. They had a czar. They had an, em right. an, an emperor, B I I just as the British had a monarchy. The British being against revolutions because they were also a monarchy. The Russians were not against this revolution be because they maybe had symp sympathy with the Greeks being the, of the same religion, Orthodox Christianity. And also, the Russians may have, if we can be cynical for a minute, maybe the Russians also thought they could expand their hegemony into the Aegean. They needed a warm oh, water port. Absolutely, I agree with that. Uh, but why right. didn't the British have the same, uh, why couldn't the British have the same motives to help the Greeks by expanding their hege hegemony into the Aegean and then towards Constantinople? Well, the the British were already in the Aegean, and uh, they, they didn't need it as badly as the Russians. They didn't need it as badly as the Russians. Uh, that is true, and also uh, they considered that the existence of the Ottoman Empire was important Keep to serve as a check on the Russians, okay. and that was them more important than just directly taking over the Ottoman Empire themselves. Uh, they already had India. They already mm -hmm. had. Uh, Chunks of Africa, Canada, Australia. They had like a third, a third of the land mass of the world. A right? huge amount of the land mass, and they really weren't that anxious to expand directly there. They wanted uh, Turkey to remain in power. Okay. So they told the Turks what the Greeks were playing in the heels, and they urged the Turkish government to suppress the rising Kios as well as in other parts of the And they also Greece. divulged the intelligence as to how the Greeks were going to be helped by the Greeks to revolt. Uh, the main elements uh, that they knew about, they didn't know every little detail, mm -hmm. but they knew the main elements. So mm -hmm. as a result of that, uh, the Turkish government, uh, as a result of this warning, they reinforced the Turkish garrison of Kios, especially in the citadel of Kios. Right. They sent more artillery to the citadel uh, and strengthened the Turkish force in Kios, which had been very weak previously because the Turks, frankly, considered that Kios were peaceful and was really no threat. So, but now they knew a threat was coming, so now they prepared. And uh, they were strong enough so that when in March of 1822, uh, a force of 2,000 Greeks did land revolutionaries, mainly from Samos, Land in Achaeus. Led by this Logothetis. Logothetis. The Kurgos Logothetis and Achaean who fought with Napoleon Burnias. But let me ask you a question. You said at first that they went in December of 1821 to Chios, the Greek Revolution. No, no, I, I, I'm misunderstanding again. Uh, the plans were laid and decision was made in December in 1821. Okay. But it was only in March of 1822 that the landing took place in Kiev. Okay, of course. I'm, it I'm it took a... several months to prepare, to get there, to train people, and uh, oh, I apologize for uh, the logistical yes. and so on. Of so, course, you're again uh, correcting me. As you well, okay. so it took a few months, but the Turks were ready for them. So uh, when uh, the Samians landed, uh, they 
attempted to storm the citadel, which was an obvious target because it was the strongest uh, uh, Turkish fortification on Kios, they got nowhere. Mm -hmm. They absolutely were incapable of taking the citadel. Well, to take a citadel, you need heavy artillery. Well, they had a few cannon, but not that many, and the Turks had more, and the Turks were firing their artillery from the citadel at the revolutionaries, so which made it difficult for them to get close enough in order to be able to is take it possible, over the citadel. Is it possible that the Samians came expecting to get help from the local Kian population and storming well, the citadel? They, well, they did as, uh, well, they absolutely did. They expected and they hoped that the Kians would rise up and revolt against the Turks once the Samians landed. But what happened? And what happened was that a few did, but not that many. Not that many did. Most of the Kians really did not want to revolt. It seems like this is a little bit misguided, this, this planned revolt of the Kians, or to expect that the Kians would rise up and join the Greek Revolution because a few revolutionaries came. It was a little misguided, wasn't it? I mean, didn't, didn't uh, Burnias and La Lycurgos Logothetis, didn't they have any idea? Didn't they, did they do any kind of... I know we didn't have Gallup polls back then and straw polls, but couldn't they have done some kind of intelligence to, to see if the local people were actually willing and able and ready and eager well, for a revolt? Well, they had some intelligence from some local people who were willing to revolt, but they really didn't have, they couldn't just go and poll everybody. The sure, island was have, under yeah. Turkish control, and by this time the Turks had quickly reinforced the garrison, mm -hmm. Uh, put in more artillery, put in more security measures. They had p also put in security measures which made it difficult to get around. Well, I'm not so much concerned with that. I'm more concerned with, uh, you, you can always expect that something, uh, when a revolt happens in one part of the Greek-speaking world, the Turks are going to re reinforce other areas that they suspect. Well, but, but my, in, my this question, particular, in this particular but my point case, is, it was because they had specific warning. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not so Samuels concerned about that right now. I'm not, what I'm trying to address here now is the idea of how could they have to completely mis, uh, not misguided, uh, how they completely misjudged the Heans in their, uh, in their eagerness and appetite for revolt? And I, and I guess because I'm thinking with 2020 hindsight from the dawn of the, from the, um, the, dawn of the 21st century back to the, to the 18th century, I'm sorry, the early 19th century, I'm thinking you know, 150 years later, 100, more than 150, 170-something years later, I'm thinking backwards. Today, you know, we, we, can, we have television, we have all kinds of mul uh, multimedia, telephones, things like that. We can judge a people's appetite, a people's mood. Back then, especially, that, uh, you know, to get to Chios took months sometimes from parts of the Greek-speaking world. Well, they, they came from Samos for the most part. Right, but, but, the intelligence, but the intelligence to the, the Greek revolutionary headquarters back in the mainland mm -hmm. to Chios. So, uh, you know, I, can, I guess it's from a, a, a man of the 20th century, you know, looking back, I'm, I'm being a little unfair, I think, to the... Well, it, to a certain extent, I, I think you're correct. But I really believe that this landing with 2,000 men had a chance of succeeding if they could have taken the citadel. And if it wasn't for the British warning, specific warning to the Turkish government and urging the Turks to do something to prepare for it and also to crush the revolutionaries, I think they could have taken the citadel. But didn't, the, didn't the Samians the, didn't the Samians know that the citadel had been reinforced? No, they they did not know any any details. Didn't they have that. one spy standing at the citadel and seeing they, all the cannons going well, in? From, from what I was able to find out, that uh, this was uh, the reinforcement was uh, it wasn't clear to the Greeks uh, how okay. substantial it was. It's possible. And yeah. they and most important of all, they had no idea that Turks had been warned by the British. By the British. That, in fact. That's uh, the biggest blow of all, probably. That wasn't revealed until this century when the British uh, released some of their diplomatic papers, uh, so which, which specifically say that they warned the Turks several times. The British ambassador in Constantinople and uh, the British consul general in Smyrna, both of them, told the Turks the Greeks are coming to, to revolt in Kios. They're, they're trying to raise a revolt in Kios. Prepare for it. Crush them. And if you think uh, about it, if you think about it, what a big blow this is, especially if you think about the fact that the, the Samians, the, the, the Greek revolutionaries on the mainland, if, 
they didn't expect any such thing. The British are telling them, we love you, we're behind you, we can't give mm -hmm. help you right now, but, you know, uh, you're our buddies and yeah, everything, we'll and we admire you, them, and yeah. uh, blah, blah, blah. They would never have suspected that such a, such a really uh, uh, rascalian type of thing to do. Really, well, betrayal. It's really a well, they never traitorous would act to, to, to tell somebody you're, we're on your side, yet you're behind their backs you're setting them up for death. And urging the Turks uh, to crush them, to crush the revolution. So the Samians had no idea, had no, no reason no, to suspect us. Well, no one really knew about it, as far as... Until uh, the 20th I, century, maybe the until, Greeks themselves didn't know until... I, I haven't seen one history of the Greek revolution that I've read, uh, which actually mentions this particular aspect. That's as far as I know, the, the Greek pe people that I speak to, and I... Uh, you know, live in Astoria, which is a Greek, Greek community, and I talk to quite a few people who are very well versed on the on the revolution. I've never heard this. I've never heard anything about this. So we may be re revealing something to a lot of, of Greeks themselves. Well, as you, you see, as you can see, I have documentation on it. I mean, plentiful documentation from British own diplomatic correspondence about now, it. Now, let's because uh, we're running out of time, right, keep so. the program moving. Now, what happened when the Samians could not get through the breakdown into the citadel and capture the citadel? Well, the Samians actually satisfied themselves with uh, trying to set up a revolutionary government in the town of Kios and some other areas. They also did some looting and, and uh, not, not only of the Turks, but also of wealthy Hians who were against the revolution. Well, that's one way to get the, the local people on your side, loot their uh, homes, <laughs> loot their right. businesses. What, what caused uh, this to happen? Frustration, what? I mean, uh, the frustration possibly the uh, frustration, anger at the Hians for the, for, uh, for the most part, they refused to revolt. Also, uh, the uh, Bishop Plato, who uh, was uh, the main bishop in Chios, he was, at this particular time, the only thing the Turks did when they, was that they took hostages of leading Chios, including the bishop. And Bishop Plato, oh, oh, who was... Stop for a second. Wait, let's get chronologically here. Let's get chronologically straight. When did they take the hostages? When the citadel was attacked? No, but well before, well before that. Uh, when they started suspecting, uh, and they had information that Greeks might be revolting, they took uh, hostages of a number of the leading uh, That's interesting because it's never ex exactly explained in the history books that I've read and that have been translated into English, maybe in Greek-speaking history books because I can't read Greek very well. It's never explained why the Turks took hostages before the Heans revolted. Now, the explanation that is given is that because there's Greek-speaking Greek people elsewhere revolting, we're going to take hostages in, in, on Chios. That's the explanation that's given. But you're saying that there's more to it. You're saying that as soon as the British warned the Turks, well, that the Heans are about to revolt or planning to revolt, that's when they took, and that's why they took hostages. I, it, I'm not certain that it's because of the information they received from the British, but it, they actually did take hostages as soon as they had information that the Greeks might be revolting on Heels. So I can't, information. Well, I, I can't directly connect this with uh, the information from the British, but it may be related to that where, as well. Where else could they get information that the Heans were revolting or planning to revolt? Uh, well, it's a possibility they had other sources of information okay. as well. But so Bishop Plato actually urged the Samians to withdraw from Chios, and he... We have to remind the audience that Bishop Plato... Well, he was Bishop actually... Chios, he was, was the, actually a hostage inside the citadel. He was a hostage inside the citadel, but there's no reason to believe that he did this because he was forced. Uh, uh, there's every reason to believe that he felt that uh, revolution in Chios would be disastrous for the people, and he really felt that the uh, revolution should, revolutionaries should withdraw in order to save uh, Chios from a possible disaster. So, and he uh, issued a declaration urging Chios not to revolt against the Turks. Uh, how, however, the Samuels didn't listen. April 11th, a Turkish fleet arrived, uh, which was on the evil, uh, actually arrived on the evil Holy Thursday, April 11th, 1822. Actually, it was Holy Thursday. Right. And uh, it was a huge fleet uh, uh, led, uh, well, commanded by the Captain Pasha, which is like the high admiral of the Turkish fleet, Kara Ali, with at least 30 major vessels and many smaller ones, arrived at Kios to crush the revolutionary attempt of the, of the people of Samos. This is April 11th, and the Samians, the revolt in Kios began in March. So March, uh, March 22, actually, so in, so about they three landed weeks. in Kios. So they were there, there was a revolt, <clears throat> the citadel was under attack for two to three weeks. Right. With uh, no success. 
Uh, absolutely not the, the least amount of success. The hostages at this point the we're still in the citadel. We're, we're still alive. We're still alive in the citadel. Every everybody was still alive. There yeah. had been some loss of life. The Samians actually did kill some of the Turkish prisoners that they took, which uh, annoyed the Turks, as you can imagine. Now. Before we get to the fact that the Turkish Navy had now arrived in, in the harbor of Hios, let's get back to the Samian looting. Could, we, we, the Samians looted Hian businesses and Hian uh, And homes, Turkish businesses and as Turkish well. homes and Turkish businesses. Right. But you, you, we can explain that by, we're not trying to excuse it in any way. Let's explain it that they were extremely frustrated that here they were coming to the Hios to risk their lives to bring the Hians freedom, which mm -hmm. the Hians didn't need, by the way. They were as free as, as any Turk. To, get, to risk their lives to uh, bring the Hians freedom from the Turkish yoke, yet the Hians just stood by and, and refused to take part in it. So out of frustration... Most Hians, some they, did, they, but they, most they refused. Looted. I'm getting the signal to wrap up. Uh, Dr. Rilich, thank you for coming. This is Orthodox Christian Television. Stay tuned. Uh, watch. Uh, call the number at the end of this program so you can find out when you can hear the rest of the story. Thank you for watching.